Hi and welcome to the Cancelled News. I'm Adam Yenser, and I've won far more Emmys than Andrew Cuomo while killing far fewer old people. Uh, if you like the show, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, because look, if Don Lemon can get 1.2 million followers spreading misinformation and being a terrible journalist, then so should I. Uh, this week I'll be interviewing my friend Dean Ryan. He's the host of Real Deal Media, and he's a very interesting guy. He used to be a producer for Alex Jones at InfoWars. He was also a producer for Coast to Coast Radio. So we'll be talking about conspiracy theories, censorship, QAnon, all of that fun stuff. But first, here's what's in the news. Yesterday, of course, was Black Friday, and Target was selling this HDTV for only $169, which is the most anyone's paid for a TV at Target all year. Here in California, people have been so excited for Black Friday deals that they have literally been camping outside ever since Gavin Newsom took office. Do you hear that's a black helicopter flying over? They found out I have Dean on the show. As I mentioned, due to the popularity of his daily coronavirus briefings, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo won an Emmy. Unfortunately, he also lost 7,000 Grammys. Now, this was sort of the opposite of the primetime Emmys in that the award portion took 30 seconds and then the in memoriam lasted three hours. As per tradition, President Trump pardoned the White House turkeys corn and cob this week. The night before, they got to stay in this hotel room where I hear they engaged in some corn on the cob. After their pardoning, they were reunited with their father. The right-wing network One America News was suspended from YouTube for spreading misinformation. Meanwhile, there are still over 100 YouTube channels telling you that healing crystals work. The reason why crystals are so powerful in healing your health issue is because it has a magical way of raising your body's energetic frequency to the higher frequency of the crystal. Apparently, YouTube won't let you say there's a cure for coronavirus, but they will let you say crystals have a vibrational energetic frequency that can heal the mind, body, and soul. Netflix has decided not to stream reruns of Chappelle's show at Dave Chappelle's request. They've also decided not to stream reruns of Mind of Mencia at the audience's request. Hold on, there's a helicopter going by again. I think the government knows I talked to Dean this week. Some fans are upset over an episode of The Mandalorian in which Baby Yoda eats a frog woman's eggs, which was apparently more offensive than Anakin slaughtering children and the genocide of Alderaan. Startup company Boom Supersonic is ready to launch its SB-1 jet, a passenger plane that can fly faster than the speed of sound. Which is great, that means you can land and get off the plane before you hear the baby crying next to you the whole time. Paramount Pictures is producing a CGI movie of Clifford the Big Red Dog, so hopefully theaters will stay closed next year, too. Los Angeles has ordered all outdoor bars and restaurants to close again for at least a month, so that Gavin Newsom can have a private party at each one of them individually. After his first appearance was canceled for violating COVID restrictions, SNL has decided to give country star Morgan Wallen a second chance as musical guest. They've also decided to give Pete Davidson a 119th chance to be funny. In sad news, Megan Fox has filed for divorce. So good luck finding someone else, you old hag. One of America's largest mall owners has said that mall Santas will still talk to kids this year, but through large glass snow globes. That way, fake Santas will be safe from the fake virus. That one's for all the conspiracy theorists that tuned in to see Dean. Oh, they, there's the helicopters again. While golfing on Thanksgiving at his course in Virginia, President Trump was overheard muttering, I hate this f***ing hole, which is also what he mutters when Jim Acosta walks by. In a new interview, Smashing Pumpkins singer Billy Corgan said that we are living in a spiritual dystopia. And in a new interview, Limp Biscuit singer Fred Durst said that he's living in his parents' basement. Bloomberg published an article saying that the best place to be during COVID is New Zealand, and the worst place to be is on Facebook. That's it for the news. Now, here's my interview with the host of Real Deal Media, Dean Ryan. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, you are the, you're, you're the host and producer. You run Real Deal Media, correct? Yes, founder. 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 Yeah, and founder. Um, 
Tell my viewers a little bit what is Real Deal Media. Okay, so uh, realdealmedia.com is a, a network for the awakened. That's what we say, but uh, we do news. Uh, we do late night, uh, like 60 minute type programs as well. But I do a daily show uh, called The Real Deal Report. And I've been doing that since uh, about March 19th, I want to say, uh, when this whole um, Twilight Zone uh, episode started. But you have such a fascinating career that sort of led you to where you are now. You've worked for, you worked for InfoWars for a little while, right? Yes, yes. What, right what, did, after, you, what did you do at InfoWars? Uh, I did producing. Uh, I was producing segments, guest. So I, when I was there, I was literally just close to putting Alex on um, uh, Jay Leno right before he left. So you were uh, trying to get Alex Jones on Jay Leno. Yeah, well, that was one of the bookings I, I was doing. Uh -huh. um, I, I was talking to uh, their producer. They were so interested. He was hot off the grill from the Piers Morgan thing. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. By, uh, CNN. So, yeah, I was just about to do that. And then also Real Time with Bill Maher. So it was a different atmosphere. Things were not so polarized like they yeah. are. Now. And so, so that's, that's an interesting thing there is Alex Jones, who, you know, a lot of people view as a conspiracy theorist. Some people see mm -hmm. him as this crazy person. But he does have this following and there are people who have always, um, you know, they like listening to him. There are people who believe what he says. There are people who watch him for entertainment value. But now there's this push to sort of censor anyone who's considered a conspiracy theorist, anyone that people want to deplatform. Um, th the first thing I wanted to ask you is, do you consider yourself a conspiracy theorist? And do you think that's a label that is a a positive label, or do you think even labeling these people conspiracy theorists is is a sort of derogatory term to sort of discredit what they're saying? Well, if you look at the term, it was created in the late 60s by the Central Intelligence Agency because people were questioning the JFK assassination. And how they were doing it really was, you know, there was no internet, there was no, you know, mass social gatherings anywhere other than concerts. So you had bands like The Birds and, and, and um, other you know notable bands of the mid '60s that were using their concert events to really question the the, the the entire event. So they came up with the term conspiracy theorists to water down and and make anyone that questions known liars like government as deranged, you know. And then uh -huh. so it's hard to say um, is conspiracy theorists a, a bad word. Well, it it, it can be. Uh -huh. If you question things and you're very sincere about it, yeah. Uh, do I consider myself one? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. What I I'm, I would say, in, in the in a fun sense, I'm like, okay, I'm a conspiracy realist. My problem, I would say, in the modern world with censoring people and trying to deplatform them, like Alex Jones. I don't mm -hmm. I, I don't agree with much that Alex Jones says, but I also don't think you should be censoring or deplatforming these people because even if you disagree with something or find it crazy. They have a right to say it. And even if the sort of narrative that conspiracy theories attach to things is, is sometimes far-fetched or is, you know, becomes these sort of fictional stories in of itself, a lot of the things they're, they're skeptical about are the sort of right things to ask questions about. Like one example I always give is like Pizzagate. Now, you know, some aspects of Pizzagate, you know, devolved into this conspiracy theory, but there was people who were, you know, uh, investigating that world that knew about Jeffrey Epstein and were trying to draw attention to what Jeffrey Epstein was long before he became a household name. Sure. And, and what government does is they purposely put disinfo out to make it look like a crazy thing to say, oh, see, you're tied to that. So therefore you're a conspiracy theorist. So it works both ways. And, you know, um, like you said, if you question things to be labeled that is almost a, a way of uh, deflection. And, uh, you know, you, you mentioned Pizzagate. Well, it, it was no conspiracy when the FBI said the following terms, you know, pizza, pasta, all these things are used by pedophilia communities and human traffickers when they communicate in emails. And then when you look at the Podesta emails, and that's, this is what it was all about, is they didn't want anyone to look inside the WikiLeaks. And they didn't want anyone to see what those emails were about. They never said, oh, those are false. Those are totally wrong. And they said, no. It's conspiracy. Even CNN said, um, Cuomo, uh, Fredo, what's his name? He said, nobody has the right to look at these. We should just leave it to us to look at the WikiLeaks. So it that's what like, it was about. Yeah, and it seems like that's what they're kind of discrediting the Hunter Biden laptop story with also, yeah. where 
you know, regardless of whether or not, you know, people can sort of make up their own minds as to whether the information on that laptop, you know, cha would have changed who they were voted for, or whether they think it's a real story. But the media dismissed it all and said, oh, that's just Russian disinformation. And it's not even worth covering or allowing people to put this story out there. Right. Well, I mean, this is how the nanny state works. They decide what's conspiracy, what's fact. You know, they're the fact checkers. They get to decide what you see, what you read, what you believe. This is, this is what, what George Orwell talked about. Double speak, you know, up is down, down is up. We're living through it right now. It That's is a very why. Orwellian, like literally Orwellian culture where people are, they're trying to get definitions of words changed in the dictionary. They're trying exactly. to censor media. They're trying to dictate what language you can use. And what I find so, terrible about the way they sort of censor, censor and fact check these things is that you, when you have something like Twitter, like when Jack Dorsey is, you know, refusing to run the New York Post article about uh, Hunter Biden, or when they're labeling questions about the legitimacy of the election as misinformation, mm -hmm. they, they're they not doing this fairly to both sides. So the entire like Russian collusion narrative that the media latched onto about Donald Trump, that to me was a conspiracy theory. There was There was not much there for real. They also had all these other stories. Now, they weren't exactly conspiracy theories, but they were sort of fake news, like Jussie Smollett and Covington Catholic and Althea Bernstein. And for the whole spring of, uh, the first spring of Trump's presidency, they were saying there was this wave of anti-Semitic bomb threats against Jewish centers, and then it turned out they were all hoaxes. And they latched onto every one of these stories without, without the information, without the facts. They never called those disinformation. They never tried to debunk those stories. But then when there's a story that they find even a little bit dubious or they, they have any skepticism about that benefits the right or hurts the left, they say, oh no, that's a conspiracy theory, that's fake news and we have to censor that. You're absolutely right. You go on Twitter right now and you're gonna see every story is an anti-Trump story. And this is what they're projecting now, either Twitter, Facebook and, and uh, Google or YouTube, Google, same thing. Either they're a utility, like it says in their yep. clause, or they're a, a, um, a publisher. A publisher, thank you. Yeah. So which one is it? And that's what's always hard for me is we now use these social media platforms as a mean of mass communications, even though at their start they are companies that we somewhat naively and foolishly handed all of our information and means of communication over to. Absolutely. It was one big like psyop to get us yeah. all on board, to get us on the grid, just like they told everyone, come to LA, come to New York, get on, get, be part of the city. So you're part of the grid. Then they control you. If they don't like what you say, they turn your water off. Well, the same thing with communication. And what this is doing, Adam, it's paving the way to what they have in China right now. It's called the social crediting system, social credit score. So and we're kind of conditioned like that already. People are like already thinking twice. No, I can't say that, or I'm going to lose 10 years worth of baby pictures of my kids and my marriage and my vacation. Mm -hmm. That's what's really keeping people and holding them back right now. And then one other thing I want to ask you about, uh, you, you know about QAnon, right? Are you familiar with that? Yeah, yeah. Explain QAnon to people a little bit. And what is your take personally on, on QAnon? It's a team of people from my understanding, you know, from Intel. I'm, you know, I don't want to get too much into it, but... Um, it's a team of people in the military connected to the NSA that are surrounding uh, the president currently. And now, so the media always describes QAnon, the way I've always seen it described by the media is that it's people who believe there's a cabal of elites that consists of celebrities and left-wing politicians who run a global network of pedophile cannibals, basically. And that the Trump administration is going to bust this, this, ring of pedophile cannibals in this in this event that what do they call it the the storm or something like that the storm or, man the great the awakening storm. so is that is that an accurate description of what QAnon people no, I, believe I, and what I it is that, right i think that's kind of just kind of a little fly by night headline of it i think what QAnon has been is um telling people of what's really been going on be, behind the con, con, uh, the control grid of censorship and the the controlled american media that's Mockingbird Media, that's Operation Mockingbird uh, CIA, is it, it's really given people insight in things they never even knew about. I mean, did they know how prevalent uh, Luciferians are throughout Hollywood? So I'm not here to uh, say, oh, go listen to QAnon now, but I'm not going to sit yeah. here and bash it and be part of that collective that says, and that's, oh, that's for you. And that's, that's why they de platform people. Also, yeah, it's like I don't, I don't personally believe you know the stuff from QAnon but like I was saying earlier I think there are things that 
you know, it's healthy to be skeptical about and they ask questions about certain sure. things and it's worth right. instead well, of just- Why can't we find our own discernment? Exactly. Why do we have to get the platform? And if it, the shoe was on the other foot, I would be condemning it just as bad yes. yep. as, as when it was happening to the, the, uh, the, the counterculture of the 60s when they were speaking out against war, they were harassed. It's yep. not right then, it's not right now. So uh, for my viewers, if they want to check out more of you, uh, where can they find you right now? Uh, just go to realdealmedia.com, uh, realdealmedia. I'm, I'm there. We have so many new uh, shows coming up. Uh, you know, we're doing some game shows. Uh, we're having uh, sections for people that are art artists. Uh, you know, submit your art, and we're going to put it up there. And um, people and musicians, because there's no venues to play right now. Yeah. So we have a show called Angie After Dark, and like MTV did, with a good platform and showcase to you know for musicians to play again. That's awesome. Be sure to check out Real Deal Media and uh, Dean Ryan. Thank you so much for being here. Adam, it's always a pleasure, and you're one of the hardest working men in the business that I know. So uh, thank you guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the interview with uh, Dean Ryan. Uh, the black helicopters have found me now. Uh, check out Real Deal Media. Um, I, I got to get out of here. <laughs>